Sage might help to show you too. Okay, so on um, one side of our screen here, I have the ingredients for the hot chocolate. Come on. Okay. So on one side of our screen here, I have the ingredients for the hot chocolate. And that includes a mug right here and some Ghirardelli hot chocolate mix and um, this will be the first time that I'm opening it so we won't open that quite yet. I also have um, some whole milk right here. You can of course use whichever type of milk you prefer. I also have um, a cup measurement right there as well as a tablespoon measurement. So that's essentially what we'll need. <laughs> so that's essentially what we'll need for the hot chocolate. Now for the chocolate covered strawberries, we're gonna need a few other things. We're gonna need a knife at some point to um, cut the leaves off the strawberries, as well as a um, small cutting board. We're also going to need um, some heavy whipping cream. You can use um, organic or whichever you prefer. Um, I also have over here some semi-sweet chocolate chips which are going to melt down with the heavy whipping cream in order to create um, a chocolate ganache. And then we also have um, a little salt shaker. We're just going to put a little pinch of salt in that chocolate ganache um, to actually bring out the sweetness. Now, the reason why I have um, these three metal bowls and this um, green cloth is to create um, a very, it's my version of a double boiler, which we're going to use to melt um, the chocolate into the ganache. So, I have here um, just a small metal bowl. You, of course, could use a small pot if you prefer. I also have over here um, a metal strainer and then I have a larger pot over here so we're going to end up putting some water into the base of this pot um, really just an inch or maybe an inch and a half of water which we're then going to bring to a boil and then I'm going to place a strainer on top of that and then I'm actually going to take my green cloth and we're going to unravel it. And then we're going to kind of roll it up like this. Lengthwise. Like that. And then you're simply going to place it into the strainer. I don't want to let Osage touch anything that's actually going to be eaten. So you're actually going to place this into the metal strainer. Like so just in a circle. You could even twist it so that the edges don't um, come apart. So you're going to place this in a circle and then you're going to place the small pot in there. And uh, the purpose of the cloth is to eliminate any steam from the boiling water getting into your melted chocolate because that can actually um, make the chocolate seize up and coagulate and that's not exactly what you want. Um, our goal with the ganache is to obtain a very smooth, silky, and creamy texture to the ganache. So um, getting any steam or water in there will put that at risk. So we want to make sure that it just stays purely the chocolate. 
chocolate and heavy whipping cream with no elements of water in there, okay? So that's gonna go over there. And that can stay like that. Okay, so now that I've explained to you um, the ingredients, we're actually going to take it into the kitchen in just a moment. And um, we're gonna begin the process. We are gonna start off with the ganache and melting the ganache and then we're going to apply the chocolate to the strawberries um, by dipping the strawberries in there. And then we're actually going to set the strawberries in the fridge for a little while while we, while we make the hot chocolate. Um, I would say that each element, each step of this process um, really only takes maybe 10 or 15 minutes at most um, and most likely it can be accomplished even faster than that. So um, if you're in the mood for some quick chocolate covered strawberries, this might be a good recipe to follow. Now I am going to be using the same chocolate ganache recipe as in my previous video about how to make truffles. The only difference, of course, is that I'll just be applying the ganache to the strawberries rather than um, rolling the ganache and then um, dipping it into cocoa powder. So it's the same basic recipe. Um, just a different use, okay? So, um, I think at this point we're gonna take it into the kitchen and we'll see, um, I'm not sure if Osage can follow us in there and frankly I didn't plan on having him in this video, he just kinda walked into it. Um, maybe he has a, maybe he wants to become internet famous or something. But we'll see, okay? Alright. So, I will see you guys in the kitchen shortly.
so you can add in an extra cloth or two like I did to prevent any steam from getting into the chocolate, but it's up to you. Our next step will be to add in one half cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips, so we'll go ahead and do that now and I'll measure it out. So I'm going to be using Ghirardelli Semi-Sweet Chocolate Chips So I'll go ahead and open those up and then we'll pour them in Reduce the heat to medium and begin mixing. Right after you add in one quarter cup of heavy whipping cream. you'll want to mix this mixture together until it becomes well combined and very smooth. This may take a few minutes.
combining process. As you can see, we have a really nice, smooth, silky consistency to our chocolate here. And this is exactly where we want to leave it.
this last one I'm just gonna eat myself right now. So I'm using Ghirardelli Premium Hot Cocoa Mix and it says to mix it with hot milk. So when we flip it over it says heat 8 ounces of milk in a small pan, add three tablespoons of Ghirardelli hot cocoa and stir, and then heat while stirring until it steams, but do not boil. So we're going to avoid boiling it, but we do want it to be nice and hot for when we drink it. So this is my cup measurement. This is my mug that I'm planning on using. And when I put only 8 ounces of um, water in the mug, it only filled it up about halfway, and I do want to get a full mug, so I'm actually going to double this recipe, and I'm going to put in 2 cups of milk. And that's going to um, fill the mug up about four-fifths of the way, and then at the very 
last uh, moment. I'm going to add in a little bit of cold milk just to cool it back down a little bit before I drink it. Okay, so I'm going to use some whole milk, but of course you can use whatever um, type of milk you choose. So I'm just going to open this up here.
so, so far the milk is a tiny bit warm so we may have a little while to go see this steam coming up here. This is the perfect time to add in our hot cocoa mix.
As you can see, that has filled up our mug most of the way. I am just going to add one little splash of milk, cold milk, to finish it off. So 
it's really not too difficult. I'll just try to place that carefully there. As carefully as you can. But you know, it's, it's no big deal. Um, if the chocolate gets a little bit misplaced,